Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland for Graphic in Motion. In this tutorial I want to show you how to customize my latest template which is called the Best Memories Falling Photos and I just want to show you how to customize the titles first. So we have two main titles, this is logo title number one and number two and if we want to customize this we just have to double click this layer or you also can find it up in the project window under title placeholders so double click and open up the composition and here we just have two uh, text layers and one placeholder for a logo or a symbol or whatever you want to put in so i just want to edit the first text therefore i just double click the layer and now i can enter some text and i will just give it some kind of a title let's say my journey to brazil Oops, and it was in 2009 and then I can just enter some subtitle and we'll type in where I've been. I've been to the Bahia, oh, so Paulo and Rio de Janeiro and now I can just just the size and everything a little bit let's make this a little bit smaller and let's make this a little bit bigger so it lines up more or less and now I could also put in another graphic instead of this here I could put in some kind of a Brazilian flag or whatever I don't have such a flag now but I just will show you how you can import something else here so I will go to import and import file and let's say I just will take one picture here it doesn't make a lot of sense but i just will do it for now and i will just put it on top of my placeholder here and really scale it down so that it's very really small and now i will move it here and scale it even down more but it was too much and i disable my placeholder and we can just imagine this is some kind of a brazilian flag or whatever and when I go back to my render comp now you see that everything updated and looks quite cool. Okay, the next thing we have to do is to edit our end title. It's more or less exactly the same as our first one. So we can open up the title here in our render composition or in our project window. So I will double click here. And now you see we have again uh, text layers and a placeholder for a logo or whatever. If you want to use a text layer I already created one but I did hide it so you have to press the I switch and disable the other one and now you can type in some text like thanks or whatever thanks to everybody I met during this journey it was very nice and now you can enter another subtext so I have no idea what I can enter here but I'm sure that you will have some very bright ideas so I go back to render comp and you see that it updated. Of course you can enter your logo or a symbol or whatever. The next thing I want to show you is how to import footage into this template. And therefore we just have to take a little look at the structure. Let's open up in the project window the footage placeholders folder. When you open this up you will see that there are two subfolders. The horizontal footage and the vertical footage. And within these folders you see there are two different types of compositions. There are the main footage compositions and there are so-called BG footage compositions. So what does it mean? The main footage compositions, as you can see when you take a look at the render composition, are all the compositions which are listed here and these are all the photos which fall in front of our camera, slow down, and which you can take a really close look. And the other compositions you will not find in this render composition, the BG footage compositions, because they just are reference compositions for trap code particular to create the background pictures. All these footage compositions together create our background, that means all the particles that are falling from the sky. I wanted to add some extra background footage because I just wanted to give it a little bit more randomness so that not only the main footage creates all the falling pictures so now we have four 
horizontal background footage compositions and two vertical background footage compositions where you can also or should also put in some photos uh, so that the whole look gets a little bit more of randomness. Okay, now I just will show you very quickly how to import footage. Therefore, we just open up our main footage horizontal 01. You always see that in the preview window, the placeholder is, has the exact same name as the composition. So you always know where you are and you don't get lost. And so we will just double click here on this layer or we also could just double click in the project window to open it up. And now I will import some pictures. So let's go to File, Import and Import File. And again, I will choose a beautiful picture from Brazil. Um, this one is really cool. So open it up and drag it under the frame. That's kind of important that you want to drag it under the frame. And now I can scale it. Oops, that was the wrong layer, sorry. I want to scale the picture, of course. And now I can also add in some title here. So I will double click the title layer, the text layer here, and just write in where it was. Let's, let's say um, sunset at Moho. So that everybody knows where we have been and now i can go back to my render comp and you see that everything updated okay now i want to show you how to add in some vertical footage i mean it's completely the same but just to give you an impression we go to our vertical one composition double click it and now we go to import import file and let's take this footage here and drag it under the frame and scale it like this maybe it was a little bit too much so i will just scale it like this and i can again write something here double click on the text layer and write beach view at more well and now go back to our render comp and now you see that our vertical photo is imported. Okay, now I want to show you one more thing. Uh, maybe you just want to replace some of the vertical photos with horizontal ones or the other way around. Yeah. If you prefer horizontal pictures and you don't like the vertical ones, you can say, okay, no, I don't want to have vertical pictures because I don't take these, I only have horizontal ones, so it's no problem. You can easily exchange them and I will show you how to do that now. Let's say we do not want to have this vertical picture in here. We want to have another uh, additional horizontal one. So we go to our project window and we take, let's say, our main footage number one and then I will just press uh, Control D to duplicate this layer and now I can open it up. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong. Open it up and now I can just put in another picture. I will go to File, Import File and I will search a nice picture. Let's take this one, very romantic one and put it in and delete the old one and scale this so that we have a nice framing. Yeah, that's quite beautiful. And I again can adjust the text, but I don't want to do this for now. And now I go back to my render comp and now I want to exchange these files. So it's important that I select in my render composition the file that I want to exchange. Now I move up to my project window and select my new composition and I will drag it down. And now I press Alt and hold down Alt and just let it go above our layer to replace it. And now you see that the whole animation is still the same, so the photo is still falling inside our frame and slowing down. But now we, you replaced the vertical footage with another horizontal picture. And of course you can do this with any of these layers. So maybe what you want to do is that you want to scale this a little bit more, you know, like it's a little bit bigger 
or whatever, you know, like this. So we replaced this footage. Okay, that's more or less it. You really don't have to know more just to give, uh, just to do a quick customization. I just want to give you another tip for this template. It is quite render intensive. That means that you will need um, quite a fast computer so that everything works fine. If you have any troubles while customizing it, so maybe your preview is too slow or your computer can't handle it, then I have one tip for you. So before starting to customize it, you just can um, click on this dude here, this hide layer button, and then you see that a few layers appear again. And then you can go to the camera settings and you can press AA to reveal the camera options. And now you can just disable the depth of field of the camera. If you do that, you know, the whole preview will just work a lot faster and easier without having trouble with RAM or whatever, you know, it just will work a lot better. So now you can do a customization, you know, and afterwards, before starting to render, you can again turn on the depth of field and then just start to render it out. This template takes quite a while to render because, you know, there is a lot going on. There are 3D particles, uh, 3D photos falling from the sky. There are lights in it. There are shadows. There is a depth of field. So be aware that if you have a computer that it's not that high developed, that it could last really a long time. So if you want to save time and you say, I don't need this high end quality depth of field look, for me, it's quite okay if I just have my pictures falling from the sky and I do not need the background to be blurred out, you can just disable the depth of field in the camera settings and render it out like this. It will save you a lot of time. But if you want to have the high-end look, just turn on the depth of field after customizing and render it out and be aware that it will take a little bit longer. But I think that it's really worth the time because the outcome is just great. And well, I think that this is it from now. If you have any more questions or troubles with the template, then feel free to email me. You can do this through my VideoHive profile or just through my homepage, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. I hope you like the template. I wish you a lot of fun, create some nice animations with it, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.